Hello everyone, it's Brian here with another video about songs about Toronto. These are songs that take place in Toronto, mention Toronto even if just in passing, or have something to do with Toronto, uh, in my opinion. And so I thought I would continue, and I'm going to start with a band that's not from Toronto. They're from Kingston, Ontario, which is about, I guess, a three or three and a half hour drive east of, east of Toronto. You'll find Kingston, Ontario. And that is a band that has been described as the most Canadian band ever. I think that's probably accurate, although I think a case could be made for the Rio Statics. But this is the Tragically Hip, their 1992 record called Fully, Completely. And uh, this was their third full-length record. They had a mini kind of album that came before it, so some people call this a third, or some people call it the fourth, whatever the case may be. This band, unfortunately, came to somewhat of a tragic end because lead singer and lyricist Gord Downey died of brain cancer in 2017, but uh, more on that later. The track I wanted to mention here is a track called 50 Mission Cap. I think some people will obviously know that song, it was quite a famous song from the band, one of their most well-known, I think. Um, in the song, uh, he, uh, Gord Downey mentions that he stole the story from a hockey card. So I'm going to steal some of this from Wikipedia because I'll never remember it all. The song is about Toronto Maple Leafs defenseman Bill Barilko and his mysterious disappearance in 1951. So the, first, the backstory. Um, Bill Barilko scored the winning goal in the 1951 Stanley Cup playoff series between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens, so he was the hero of the day. About four months later, I think it's four months and less than a week later, he got on a single-engine plane with a friend of his to go on a fishing trip in northern Ontario, and the plane disappeared, and no one could find it. So 1951, he evidently died. Um, now, 11 years later, on June 7th, 1962, a helicopter pilot noticed plane wreckage. Uh, the wreckage was 62 miles north of Cochrane. In other words, it turned out that they were 35 miles off course of their, of their planned route. So um, that's kind of a sad story that they died in a plane crash. Now, in 1962, Bill Barilka was then buried in his hometown of Timmins. And the interesting thing is that the last goal he scored, he won the cup and they found his body in the year the Leafs won their next Stanley Cup. So they didn't win, they didn't win any in between. So the lyrics that Gord Downey sings are, Bill Barilko disappeared last summer. He was on a fishing trip. The last goal he ever scored won the Leafs the Cup. They didn't win another till 1962, the year he was discovered. So that's kind of sad. The interesting thing for me about the Toronto Maple Leafs and Stanley Cups is that we have not won since 1967. I mean, it is long overdue. I don't know if we'll ever win again. It's just, it's just a horrible thing. In interviews about this record, Gord Downey referred to that song as being uh, an Amelia Earhart story, except that everyone knows who Amelia Earhart is. But I think it's safe to say that most people in Canada know who he is now. Um, 50 Mission Cap, though, um, the song title references a military cap, and it was a cap that was, maybe still is, worn by bomber pilots and fighter pilots, you know, under their headphones. And after being on many missions, I guess this is suggesting 50 missions, uh, the cap became worn, or it looked, looked like it had a lot of, ex looks like you had a lot of experience if you had a worn cap. So apparently younger or more junior pilots would try to wear their cap in, like rough it up a bit to make it look like they had more experience than they actually did. In the song, he talks about keeping a cop, this hockey card uh, stuffed up under his 50 mission cap. So it's an interesting tie in there with the, the cap. But some things I didn't know, um, is that the song remains a stable part of the warm-up playlist that is played by the Toronto Maple Leafs in warm-ups at uh, Air Canada Centre, which is where their home ice is. Now, Bill Barocco did not play at Air Canada Centre. He played at Maple Leaf Gardens, but um, the current home ice is at uh, the Air Canada Centre. So they play that song for warm-ups for home games, and the Leafs have a handwritten set of lyrics written by Gord Downey that he signed. It hangs in the player's private lounge yeah, at the Air Canada Centre. When the Tragically Hip would play, concerts at um, the Air Canada Centre, they would leave Bill Barilko's banner hanging on the rafters instead of taking it down. So kind of like a tribute to him. Now, Bill, um, Gord Downey died of brain cancer in uh, 2017, on October 17th, unfortunately. And that was um, a really sad day for Canada. It was almost like a period of national mourning because we knew a year ahead of time that he was seriously ill. The Tragically Hip went on the road to do one last final cro uh, cross-nation concert tour. It was highly publicized. They played a very 
um, emotional last concert in, in their hometown of Kingston, which was broadcast nationally. And there is another song I'm going to mention in a later video about that event as well, uh, but we'll get to that in the next one. Um, and then he died. I mean, the problem is that his, um, I guess, the, the last concert was a really good idea, but his voice was really shot by then. He couldn't really sing in tune, but it was kind of an interesting thing to see. And I did watch the broadcast of the show. His solo record that came out 10 days after he died, so posthumously, so it's kind of a sad affair already. This, he was working on this record. I think it took four days to record it, and it came out um, in just 10 days after he died on October 27th, I believe. It's called Introduce Yourself, and it's about people he's known over the years. So there's a lot of references to people he knew or uh, people he um, you know, had, had encountered in his life. And the title track called Introduce Yourself mentions a couple of Toronto places. Um, firstly, he says he went down the Danforth on Christmas Eve. And if you watched the last video, I already mentioned Danforth Avenue. It's the uh, part of, well, in fact, it's Bloor Street on the west. Once you cross the Bloor Street viaduct, the Bloor Street becomes the Danforth Avenue, becomes Danforth Avenue. We often just call it the Danforth for whatever reason. It's the area where there's the Greek business district. So, and he lived, uh, I think, in the, he lived south of there in Riverdale, I believe. I remember seeing a video of his house when it was on, on sale, so, or for sale on the real, uh, real estate thing. So he talks about going on Danforth Avenue, and then he says, I walked up to the front door of the Black Pearl Tattoo Parlor, which is a real tattoo parlor on Danforth. It's at 292 Danforth Avenue. And he mentions that. So I thought that was kind of interesting how he mentions a very specific business in Toronto, which I don't think I've experienced before. I don't think I've seen that in another song, so that's kind of interesting. But all in all, kind of a sad story. Now here's a band called the Pucka Orchestra. This came out in 1994. It's their debut record. And this coincidentally is uh, an old CBC copy. You might notice it here, Radio Canada, uh, labeled with Canadian content. Now. I guess when records became out of fashion, CBC uh, eliminated their entire record collection in what in various locations. I have a number of them that came from CBC. They're always in great shape. Sometimes they have a sticker. I could take this off with Google on it will work. And on the um, inside, this one's from CBC Sudbury. I have some from CBC Toronto. And uh, this record is actually really good. There's a really excellent cover version of Tom Robinson's Listen to the Radio. And there's a song called Rubber Grill, which is hilarious. The only other song I can think of that shares the same theme is, if you know the police, is the first record from the police called, there's a track called Be My Girl Sally. If you know that song, you know exactly what Rubber Girl is about. But first track on side A is called Cherry Beach Express. So Cherry Beach is a real place in Toronto. I will, maybe I'll put a map in here. I can show you it. It's a real place. Um, when that song came out, the Toronto police tried to have it blocked from radio airplay because the song is about police brutality and they did not want it on the airwaves. Now, I don't know if the song is written from personal experience or maybe from a story that was read or if it was totally invented, but it is about the Toronto police. And it's, <laughs> he sings, I got a bone to pick with you, not so friendly, boys in blue. When you come out of the station and into the street, everybody beats a hasty retreat. And he goes on to say, well, it was late one Friday. I'm a little bit wrecked. You're on your way to serve and protect. Now, to serve and protect is the slogan of Toronto Police. If you see a police car, you will see to serve and protect written on it. You buzz out of the cruiser like bees from a hive and ask me if I want to go for a drive. And he sings, that's why I'm riding on the Cherry Beach Express. My ribs are broken and my face is in a mess. And a name on my statements under duress, 52 Division, which is probably the most well-known police division in Toronto, handcuffed to a chair. I'm trying to line up but fall down the stairs. He, so in the rest of the song, he proclaims he's innocent. He tries to explain, and they're telling him, just make sure you don't do it again. He talks about he has broken ribs. His face is all messed up, and they're telling him to confess. He's confessed that he's mystified, horrified, terrified, um, and that his statement is, is not really accurate. So that's an interesting song. Again, I don't know if it's about something that happened to him or someone he knew, but um, it's kind of an interesting song about Toronto Police. And uh, we'll leave it at that. Now, a band, another band I've mentioned before <clears throat> is this band from Toronto called L'Etranger. This is called Running Out of Fun Town. They're second of three EPs. The lead singer, um, Andrew Cash, went on to have a solo career and, and oddly then went on to be a politician. He was a member of parliament, which I guess is sort of equivalent to a member of the House of Representatives in the States. But also his bandmate, Charlie Angus, followed the same route. In fact, Charlie was first. Charlie uh, became an MP f up in Thunder Bay, I think, uh, Andrew Cash in Toronto. 
Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew Cashin lost the last election, but uh, Chuck Charlie English is still, he's called Chuck here, but he's still an MP, which is kind of funny. So they're nominally described as a punk band. Someone described them as a gang of four, but with a sense of humor, whatever that means. I don't know if I would really say punk. I mean, they're punk in attitude, maybe, and they're punk in the fact that they address social issues. Uh, so maybe in that respect, but they don't really sound like a, a punk band to me. After all, there's a saxophone on here. So the song I wanted to mention is a track called One People, which is uh, listed here. And um, it's an anti-apartheid song, which is kind of strange because you might think, you know, what does Toronto have to do with, anti with apartheid? <laughs> but he starts out by singing, I was walking through Kensington Market. And Kensington Market is a inner city, kind of like bohemian market. It's really sort of looks kind of uh, anarchic if you walk through it. There's... Um, Things look a bit run down, but then there's things like jewelry stores. Uh, there's creeping gentrification around there, but there's secondhand clothing stores, there's jewelry stores, there's um, there's a record store, not a very good one. Um, there is uh, lots of fruits and vegetables, like ring grocers, there's uh, uh, things like that. So it's a really kind of curious place right next to Chinatown. So the two kind of blend in together almost. Anyway, I was walking through Kensington Market and I saw graffiti on the wall. It said, we don't need your kind living here. Underneath was written, forgive us all. So that kind of um, uh, jingoistic or um, um, xenophobic uh, comment on graffiti. They go on to sing, one people in Toronto, one people everywhere, one people got to stand together. And we got to show, we got to care. So thematically, an anti-apartheid song um, that happens to be set in Toronto, at least in the beginning. Um, he talks about native, uh, native peoples as well towards the end of the song. So that's kind of interesting as well. Um, and it does specifically reference South Africa at some points in the song and uh, Soweto and things like that. So pretty interesting record. And, and as I mentioned, Andrew Cash had a solo career uh, after that. Now, because I mentioned Kensington Market, the and I pulled that record out, the logical next record was this one from Bruce Coburn called Inner City Front from 1981. Bruce Coburn is a legendary Canadian singer. I think he's around 78 now, still touring released 32 records somewhere around there plus some um, live records and compilations so a huge volume of stuff I don't really know how well known he is outside of Canada started as kind of like a folky kind of singer there's a bit of Christian stuff in his early music uh, he became very political for a time uh, and there's a track on here called you pay your money and you take your chance side a he's having a cigarette and a beer on the cover there and you know, a lot of his records have uh, one song in French, uh, or and also sometimes an instrumental, but uh, we just have French lyrics here in addition to the English lyrics. And there he is again, smoking a cigarette. And I mention this song because it does mention Kensington Market like the last song. So the lyrics are, woman cry, chase man down street crying, no checking, no please don't. Another reel comes, they run along St. Andrew, a street in Toronto turns south on Kensington, again Kensington Avenue, which runs right through Kensington Market. He talks about uh, somebody going down the alley past the chicken packers, and he's talking about like um, a fleshy laughing man in a blue shirt. So I don't know if, I think this might be a real inspired uh, 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 story, I guess, or a, a song inspired by a real story. He's talking about um, um, down the alley past the fire escape, a woman was talking on the telephone, so that kind of thing. And again, I think it's probably, uh, well, it's certainly set in Toronto. I don't know if it's a true story or something he just made up, but kind of an interesting song with references to Toronto. And here is a record that I, I don't, I still don't love this this record. I got it very cheaply. It was like six bucks, brand new, and I'm still struggling with it, but it's Jens Lechman and Annika Norlin called Correspondence. I mentioned this in a previous video about um, the fact that it's written in terms of like letters to each other. And there's a really... Uh, mention of a sad uh, sad event in this in one of the tracks here called Revenge of the Nerds so the song makes reference to two events first is and then the Isla Vista happened and that's a reference to the incel attack at Island Vi Isla Vista where several people were, were murdered and then he says he sings and the Toronto attack this spring and I read these incel threads they reminded me of something I checked my old friend on Facebook, etc. But the incel attack in Toronto took place in 2018 on Young Street in North York, where um, a man, an incel driving a van, plowed into some pedestrians <clears throat> on a sidewalk, killing 11 people and injuring, I think, almost 20 other people. So that is a 
probably the saddest thing that's ever been written about Toronto. And uh, again, I'm still not sure how much I like this record. It's a bit, I'm a bit ambivalent about it. And then finally, to wrap this up, a song that makes reference simply in passing to Toronto, but I had to include it because yeah, it's one of the first ones I thought of as well. That's the heart of rock and roll from Huey Lewis and the news from sports. And if you know that song, he name checks a number of places like New York, LA, Hollywood, San Antonio, um, the Liberty Tower. He talks about uh, Boston, Baton Rouge, Tulsa, Austin, Oklahoma City, Seattle, San Francisco, Cleveland, Detroit. And he goes, uh, Toronto, Montreal. So I just included that because it makes me laugh. I've had this forever. Um, I don't really listen to it much anymore, but um, yeah, it was kind of fun at the time. So that is even more songs about Toronto. And I will do, yeah, at least one more, maybe two, and uh, maybe three. Who knows? Uh, but thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.